Hey everyone and welcome back to another BlizzCon 2016 video. Today we are going to be taking a look at patch 7.1.5. They actually announced two patches this BlizzCon and they even talked about their patch schedule and overall just what they want to do with World of Warcraft. This video will cover 7.1.5 and their new way of doing things and a full look at patch 7.2 will be coming out tomorrow. Okay, so First of all, let's talk about their patch philosophy. Ian talked about their past failings and said that their plan is to have a steady flow of content that doesn't dry up. Now, he said what that means is that they are looking at three sizes of patches. So large ones like 6.2, 3.3 for the Lich King, and then small ones like 6.2.1, and then medium ones like Return to Karazhan, which just came out a week and a half ago. So Overall, their plan is to keep the cadence of content going with smaller patches like what I'm going to talk to you about with 7.1.5 being designed to bring content into the game when it's ready. They said there would be times where they'd actually have a feature finished for ages, but they'd have to hold it back so it could be a part of a larger patch. Their philosophy now is just to release stuff quicker and when it's ready. So even though 7.1.5 is technically a small patch, it does actually bring some really good stuff. He said that one of their big goals with patches like this is to add what they call evergreen content. That's basically just content that is agnostic to the period of time in which it's released. And he also said that they want to make the world feel more alive with this patch. So let's just get right into the content. First of all, class updates. And I know that's something that a lot of players are really interested in. They are planning on doing their first major pass of class changes in 7.1.5 now that they've got a lot more data to work with with all the raids. So they want to do a pass of talents to make things more balanced and more diverse because right now some options just don't feel like they really exist. You know, you look at a talent here and well, there isn't a choice. You just have to choose one. They don't really like that. So they want to shake that up and they want to do changes beyond just pure number tweaks. So that might mean new talents or significant changes to existing ones. They also want to improve the feel and flow of combat. So he basically said they're looking to improve some of the rotational mechanics of some of the specs. I'm very keen to see what that actually ends up uh, leading to, especially for, as an example, the MM and SV Hunters. They're also looking to bring back some of the utility that they removed, as well as adding some new utility spells. So the headroom that the Legion Prune sort of afforded them has given them an opportunity to take a fresh look at things, perhaps design some utility from the ground up. He actually said that some of the removal was a mistake where basically spec identity ended up hurting class identity with a good example of that being that they removed traps from MM and BM hunters to give them to SV, which made SV feel like trappers, but actually just made hunters feel less like hunters overall. He also said that rogues are going to be getting their cloak of concealment back. Yeah, I suppose a pretty good thing. Next, the Brawler's Guild is coming back and this is actually a pretty big update. They're adding dozens, yes, dozens of new bosses to the system, as well as a new raid type boss, and these seem pretty epic. Basically, there is a chance with every new brawl that it will be a raid style boss, which will suck every player in the room into the arena for a fight. So that feature is called Rumbles, and it's one of the things that will be coming in the third season of the Brawler's Guild. There's also a new currency called Brawler's Gold. Now, it can be used for shared benefits, such as a temporary graveyard near the ring, which I love the idea of, that'd be dead handy, or an NPC who allows you to place bets on other people's matches. They basically want to use this to emphasize the social element of the Brawler's Guild a lot more. As far as rewards go, well, Ian said there will be shirts, many new shirts, and a basilisk mount. I would presume the mount that was data mined in patch 7.1. So overall, that's pretty cool, and I'd definitely be looking forward to getting back into the Brawler's Guild now that it seems like it's got a good bit of new content as opposed to just a retuning. They're also bringing in a new feature called Micro Holidays. These are holiday events which are meant to make sense for the people who live in the game world rather than be excuses for IRL events to be in the game. So Ian gave a few examples. One of them is Anchorage Remembrance Day, which happens the day that Anchorage was open for the first time. I believe it's sometime in January. So AQ Remembrance Day has players of both factions going to Silithus to complete goals similar to those um, of the old zone of Silithus. Whichever faction for each region does the most hand-ins uh, hand in that day, they'll actually get their banner flying over Anchorage for the upcoming year, the entire year. You're not going to get any rewards in return, but that's still pretty cool. We've also got Volunteer Guard Day, which lets you do just that. It seems to involve some sort of mini game where you're going around stopping wrongdoers. The Hatchling of the Hippogriffs holiday happens in Feralas, and players who go there will get a Hippogriff kind of thing that functions in the same way that Pepe does currently. So I imagine half the internet will go insane over that. 
Um, now, none of this involves player power rewards. None of it involves mounts, pets, or achievements. It's purely meant to be a system that puts more activity into the world. I would hope that this is just the start of that and that overall the goal of the world feeling more alive is something that they're going to continue with upcoming patches. Overall though, I really like the idea of micro holidays and uh, Ian said that they will be adding a lot more of these as time goes on. And also most of them do seem to last for like just a single day. They're also updating the art of the Blades Edge Arena, a little bit like what they did with Nagrand in 7.1. The difference here is that it's actually coming with a commentator NPC who will be doing a voiceover of the battle and it's something they'll be testing out with this patch and they might roll it into other ones but they're going to see how it goes. They're also doing new artifact knowledge catch up mechanics with this patch. I'm sure a lot of people will be hyped for that. You will be able to directly purchase artifact knowledge books up until a certain point with order hall resources. So if you've got an alt that you just want to get into content immediately, you can buy a whole bunch of books up front get your artifact knowledge up to speed rather than feeling like you just need to wait a week or two for the knowledge work orders to just catch up on their so um, by themselves. Mr. Pandaria is actually being added to time walking as well with the Temple of the Jade Serpent, Storm Stout Brewery, Shadow Pan Monastery, Temple of the Setting Sun, Mogushan Palace, and Siege of Nuzhao Temple being included. It's going to come with a new, you know, just like new sort of set of time walking rewards like what they do with every single new time walking thing, but they didn't really specify what they are. And that pretty much is it for the patch. It's actually something that I'm really happy with overall as a sort of slice of content. I'm especially happy with the patch philosophy that Ian laid out at the start of the panel. I think if they pull this off, it could be a turning point for World of Warcraft because when you think about it, right, there's been a major content drought in every single expansion, especially since, say, like Wrath and Cataclysm. So if Legion can be the first time that they don't do that, things I'd say could be looking very good for the future. As far as when we get to see this content, there is no release date, but we do know that it hitting the PTR is pretty much dependent on how badly hung over they are from BlizzCon, so essentially the goal, or the plan is, for this to be on the PTR sometime early next week. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, and do keep on looking at the channel tomorrow because I will have a video which is an overview of patch 7.2, which seems absolutely ginormous, and a whole bunch of other content as well, but that's been it for me, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.